Hello everybody, it's Gary Stuckey with Real Music. Hope you're doing okay wherever you are today. It's a beautiful day here. Perfect weather to sit back and enjoy a podcast. I've got a great guest lined up for you. It's the leader of the Glenn Miller Orchestra, and they're celebrating 80 years. Got a brand new album coming up tomorrow called the Glenn Miller Orchestra 80th Anniversary of the Army Air Force Band. And a brand new single, Sentimental Journey with Crystal Gale. An awesome song and a great album. I think you're going to love it. You need to check it out. But here we go. Here he is. Here's Eric Stabnow. You've got a brand new album. It's, it's coming out this Friday, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm, I, I've been listening to the music like I always do when, you know, I have guests on here and I check it out, you know. And uh, and it really stirred up a lot of uh, happy thoughts because I just, I found this letter from my uh, grandfather to my grandmother, World War II. So those songs are the background music for that era. And you're keeping it going after all these years, right? Who would have thought that Glenn Miller's orchestra would still be around and y'all would carry that uh, tradition, that that great name, the great music. Tell us about what's going on, but the brand new album coming out Friday. Let's talk about that. Yeah, it it really is something that the orchestra is still around uh, 80 years later and the band still tours all over the U.S. and some international dates, sometimes like 200 or more shows in a calendar year. So it's as busy as ever. And this particular album is an exciting one. Uh, We're playing music from a period in Glenn's career when he served in the military. That was 1942 to 1944. And he led a terrific band uh, in the military, in the newly formed Army Air Forces. And, you know, military bands have been around for a long time, but he sort of modernized the sound of of military bands. And it wasn't just marches anymore. It was like the popular music of the 1940s. So this particular album focuses on the year 1944. It's the, the 80th anniversary of that year. And all this music that we recorded um, has never been recorded in the studio before before now. It's some of it's been preserved on radio broadcasts from, from that era, um, but this is the first time it's officially been recorded in the studio. So it's, it's very exciting. That is so cool. Um, some great songs on there. I mean, a lot of songs that everybody just loves to hear. And like you said, recorded for the first time uh crystal gale has a song on there can you talk about that a little bit yeah absolutely yeah she's got uh it's the single from the album it's called sentimental journey that's actually the one song that's not necessarily a glenn miller song it's from the 1940s though it was popularized by les brown with doris day singing the melody so uh it's it's serving as the single and a way to introduce people to this album and we're lucky enough to have uh have crystal join the orchestra for that particular song she sounds fantastic and it's just uh just a real exciting opportunity for us yes she sounds great yes she was made for that song Absolutely. Uh, and uh now tell me about you about coming on board now when did you join up with with orchestra and how did you just get so excited and involved in this uh project i mean you had to have heard of the orchestra is that something you always thought about doing how did you get on board yeah i joined it in 2017 so i'm going on seven years now this summer and i've always liked big band music and swing music i grew up listening to this stuff my parents like this music and I started playing saxophone in grade school, and I studied music in college as well. So I knew about Glenn Miller's music, you know, my whole life or most of my life. And at some point, I found out that the, the orchestra was still touring. The Glenn Miller Orchestra was still around. And I had a friend who was in the band um, in 2017, and he let me know about this tenor saxophone opening. So sure enough, I auditioned for the band, and, and uh, I joined up in June of 2017, and I've been touring ever since. Awesome. Now, but you're also, in addition to playing, you're you're leading the band. So how do you, how does one lead a band? How do you go about uh, doing your uh, your activities uh, in the band? I mean, what what does that job consist of? Yeah, it's it's a whole new set of set of responsibilities. Um, I still play tenor saxophone, but I, I started as music director um, over the pandemic. I, I switched into that role, so I think it was the summer of 2021. And uh, I still play tenor sax in in the saxophone section. I also sing with the band now. I sing some of the lead vocals. And as far as the music director goes, I kind of just prepare, um, 
you know, just prepare the music for each show. And and at the show itself, I, I sort of serve as the host. So uh, in between most songs, I'll give a little bit of background history on the song and on the original band, as well as the band we have on stage, a bunch of terrific musicians from across the country. So there's a fascinating history to this music, and, and we'll give the audience a little bit of that perspective. That's great. That'd be awesome. Um, and with you, you know, playing that kind of music, you know, in my mind, you know, you, you're thinking of, like you said, the 1940s and and how the music really touched people. And I know with Glenn Miller being uh, in the Army and, uh, you know, uh, sacrificing, um, you know, it, it means a lot to people to know that fact and to know that these songs are really uh, kind of uplifting people during a, a rough time in history. I mean, you know, World War II and even now through all the challenges in life, how do you think this kind of music really appeals to people? Why do you think this particular period of music touches people so much? Yeah, I, I, I think you touched on it right there with the, the war era, the World War II era. Of course, Glenn was maybe the most popular musician of his era, the 30s and the 40s. But I think this music has taken on even more of a significance because it will always be associated with World War II, the, the soundtrack of that era, if you will. And, and rightfully so, because Glenn was so popular and he served in the military. So it's it's not only popular music, but it's it's significant and important music during such a significant time in this country's history. And uh, with Glenn serving in the military, that's just, uh, it really is huge. Right. Um, and I was reading about the uh, Chattanooga Choo Choo was, uh, it became the first, uh, Glenn Miller and the, and the orchestra was the first recording group to be awarded a gold record in 1942 for Chattanooga Choo Choo. That's really cool because there's been a lot of gold uh, records since then, but that's uh, that says a lot about the music and uh, how popular he was even then and, and throughout all the years. I mean, how cool is it to win a gold, the first gold record? It is neat, yeah, and we included Chattanooga Choo Choo on this particular album as well. It's it's one of the most requested songs, of course, because it's so popular, and the significance of that gold record, too. You know, it was recorded in 41, and then you mentioned he received that gold record in 42, so in less than a year, it sold over a million copies, and uh, it was sort of symbolically given that gold record. Glenn was awarded that on a live radio program but that's, you know, it's become a trend ever since gold records and platinum records and all this. So that's the very first one. Chattanooga that, Choo Choo. That's, that'd be a good trivia question for people out there, but that's really cool though. Maybe you'll see that on Jeopardy or something when there's. A <laughs> yeah, we should. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, really cool though. Those songs though, like you, you're watching some of the old movies and sometimes you see clips of Glenn Miller and, all the, you know, and, and you're like, it gets excited for that kind of music, you know, uh, or even Archie Bunker, you know, sings about Glenn Miller, you know. Yeah. But I mean, uh, but but the music though, it lives on. Uh, so, what what is your main uh, thoughts about when recording this album? I mean, what's on your mind about you know, like you said, the first time it's being recorded on you know this album, and then and so how do you think about that process? What what was it like for you to record it? And what did you think of the overall uh, recording? Yeah, it's, you're right. It's a big undertaking. And uh, it, it's really amazing that we had the opportunity to record this stuff in the studio for the first time ever. You know, any, any other recordings of this stuff that existed are maybe lower quality radio broadcasts, right? So this is really like high definition version of this music. And it deserves it because it's such great music, not only including the typical personnel of the Glenn Miller Orchestra, which is kind of what people would think of as a jazz band and uh, plus the strings as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's fortunate for us that we tour so much. The musicians are together all the time and we've recorded our portion of this album at the end of a tour. So, uh, so we had the exact same musicians in the studio that we tour with. We've been playing together night after night after night for, I think it was a couple months, got into the studio and it's a pretty seamless transition at that point, you know, just to go in the studio and record this music that we've been practicing. So I'm, I'm very pleased with the way the band performed and we've got a great bunch of musicians on there. So it's, it's really, uh, it was a nice experience. Right. I'm, I'm sure it was. Uh, what, 
what's the total number of people that you got uh all together uh working on this yeah that's that's a good question i was earlier in an interview um i was trying to remember how many people we had in the studio at any given point there because it's, it's quite a few um i think in in the typical in the glenn miller orchestra as we tour we had um 16 musicians in there recording our parts and then you know you've got the string section that came in a little bit later and the vocals are recorded a little bit separately so you know we had we had our full 16 in there at any given time but there's tons of people in and out of the studio but yeah at any given time well is there like a certain pressure though i mean i know you're playing live and then there's the crowds and there's different kinds of moods and things like that is it different recording i mean you feel like well this is it we got to do it in so many takes or whatever you know you're like i don't want to mess this up you know so how, what's your feeling whenever you're recording and you're like oh boy here we go yeah it, it certainly is different than a live show and, and we play so many live shows that uh again we're lucky to have the chance to have played together as a band for for weeks and weeks before this to get ready for it and i think by the time we got in the studio i mean we were ready to go you know a couple takes and, and we're good on most of these songs uh, and again, we have a great band, so it was a pretty seamless thing going into the studio. But we did try to replicate the feeling of a live performance in the studio. So nowadays, if you record a pop album or a country album, um, you know, individuals might come into the studio one at a time and record their part and re-record their part. But we all went in there at the same time, and we really did try to play it just like we do on stage every night. And I hope that comes across in the album that this is like an exciting music and it's a, sort of an acoustic music as well that we're just capturing in the studio. Right. And you talk about playing live. I mean, it's got to be a certain excitement to see people enjoying the music that's been around for all these years. I know there's fans that always, you know, are talking about it and, and, you know, the music is everywhere, of course, you know, and, and I know that people enjoy the music. Have you, uh, have you had some uh, compliments? I know the, the album was going to be released on what Friday, but what, what is uh, the people that have heard it? What have they said about this? Were they really kind of like, Whoa, or what have they said about it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's, it is different seeing the band live too. You know, I'm sure most people that come to our shows have heard these original recordings from the thirties and forties people know in the mood or moonlight serenade or Chattanooga choo choo and hearing the stuff at a live concert, it is different. It's just energetic music and it's kind of just really exciting music um, to hear live. So it's, it's unique too, because, you know, this band plays mostly acoustically. There's, you know, 16 musicians on stage maybe. So it's not like you're hearing everybody mic'd up. You're hearing the natural acoustic sound of, saxophones and the trombones and the trumpets and the rhythm section which is kind of rare in today's music so uh, it's also i think kind of a unique sound for audiences to hear these days sure and uh i know with every release of every year you know when you put music out there these days and, and people get a taste of the music scene and what's going on you know this is an opportunity for uh younger generations to hear music that was you know, out back then, there was a big part of music history that really influenced a lot of people and touched their lives. And, you know, do you see a lot of younger people uh, at these shows? Yeah, I'd say the audiences are, are pretty, um, yeah, there's there's quite a bit of a, a variety in age. You know, we have an older demographic. We see some younger folks as well. I think uh, we see a lot of younger folks at some of these dances or events that we play. Now, back in the 30s and 40s, Glenn played almost all dances. It was dance music. Nowadays, it's mostly theater shows, but we still play swing dances and, and 1940s themed events. And we see a lot of younger folks come out to that stuff. I think there's been a, a bit of a swing dance revival in the last couple of decades. So they seem to enjoy that. And this kind of music is always like, trending on social media. So I think that gets some younger people involved as well, which is exciting too, because it's such great music. We just hope that everybody has a chance to hear it. Sure. Yeah, you know, like I said, you know, watching these older movies and you see them dancing and things like that, you know, it, it really makes you uh, smile because they really appreciate the music. They really got into it, you know, and, and they yeah. weren't just standing there. They were they were taking part uh, in the music. Now, in your background, you know, coming to this orchestra, like you said, what, uh, seven years ago, um, was that, uh, but that, 
music this this genre of music was that always a part of you or did you kind of focus more on this type as time went by well what's your background your favorite kinds of music yeah a bit of both yeah i always like big band music so of course you know i hear musicians of the swing era uh glenn miller tommy dorsey benny goodman those guys some of the classic uh sort of jazz big bands like duke ellington count basie uh Buddy Rich, bands like that. I always like big band music. When I went to study music in college, it was more of a, more of like a, a jazz focus, which is some big band music and some smaller group music, like highly improvised music in that sense. Um, and then when I got, when I joined the Glenn Miller Orchestra in, in 2017 is really when I started focusing like specifically on his music. And I couldn't have imagined how much how much music there was to, to study and, and the nuance to this stuff and the style and expression to his music. And, you know, it's seven years in and I'm discovering new stuff all the time. It, it's such a fantastic band and such a, a great era of music. Yes, uh, I totally agree. Um, and are there a lot of people, though, uh, are there like movies or TV shows or people that say, I want some of this music. I want you to play this. I want you to do that. Has the popularity kind of made it uh where people were like wanted more and more in on TV shows or movies. Has that been happening? As far as, as far as this band goes, I don't know if we've had any opportunities like that, but certainly back in the thirties and forties, that kind of helped Glenn's career too. He, he started two movies with the band in 1941, Sun Valley Serenade in 1942, there was orchestra wives. Chattanooga Chuchu comes from Sun Valley Serenade. So, uh, you know, since then we've seen, you're right, bands and artists like in films, the Beatles did that a bunch. Glenn was one of the first to kind of start that trend. And, uh, but you know, you touched on as well, when you watch old movies, you hear this music all the time and e even more modern movies, you'll be flipping channels and you hear in the mood in the background of a movie or Moonlight Serenade in the background of a movie. So this stuff is, it's popular. It really is. And a lot of folks know those melodies. So cool. Um, talking about Moonlight Serenade, my dad, was a DJ and he used to play that Moonlight Serenade to end the show, his little show they had. So that, you know, a little cool. But, but, you know, the music though is a soundtrack uh, to people's lives, you know. And I know for you, like you said, you know, to be a part of that, something big, you know, um, I think an album like this with these songs uh, will touch a lot of people. Now, why, how did you uh, decide to get? this selection of song another a ton so why how did y'all decide on these songs yeah we went through um that war era specifically and then sort of narrowed down to, to 1944 specifically uh so it, it helps to narrow down just a little bit that way and just listen through a lot of this stuff and you know i think when when recording an album there's a lot of factors that lead into it we wanted a mix of instrumentals and vocals and specifically some traditionally male vocals, traditionally female vocals, um, and, you know, kind of figured out stuff that would be a little bit more accessible to record in the studio and uh, and kind of make sense for a studio recording. Some songs kind of suit themselves to a live performance better. Some things lend themselves to the studio performance better. So we found ways to narrow it down and narrow it down. And uh, we're able to come up with these 15 songs and some really great stuff on there. There's some classics that everyone will know and, and love. And there's some things that people probably haven't heard before, but it's, it's really terrific stuff as well. And the album uh, is going to be released on Friday. Uh, I know you'll be doing a lot of, you know, different interviews and things like that. Um, and I know you're excited about that. Um, well, tell me about some shows you got. What's, what's the shows that are lined up for this uh, for celebrating 80 years? What you got? coming up yeah yeah well we've got we, we just finished up uh i guess about a two and a half month tour the band started in florida in january and we went all the way across the southern states to california and then we went up the west coast to washington so we were on the road for about two and a half months and we have some time off right now and our next tour starts uh tomorrow <laughs> we've got oh, cool. and, yeah we're starting in oklahoma city tomorrow we'll be on the road for about a month and a half um heading eventually towards towards the northeast so the band is is on tour we say full time it's it's a year-round thing we'll go on the road for a couple months and then have a few weeks off then we're on the road for a couple months and have a few weeks off so we're really just we'll be around the country playing and stuff all over 
Awesome. Uh, you know, I was just thinking, uh, also, uh, Glenn Miller's uh, family, is, or does he have some family members that are checking everything out and kind of say uh, how they feel about everything? I know that, that? Yeah, I know there are folks um, in, in our organization that are, you know, have kept in touch with the Glenn Miller estate. I, I have not met any family members personally, um, but we, we've met family members or I've met family members of his original band. Uh, some folks that'll come and see shows, which is really nice to have that that personal connection with the 1930s and 40s band with Mohardman today. So cool, so cool, and uh, I'm sure that Glenn would be very uh, happy uh, about the continuation of this orchestra and the great music through all these years. I know he's smiling, uh, looking down because that's that's a big deal, and uh, you know. There's, you know, all kinds of music out there, but this is really good music. This is what I call real music. And uh, and it's really good. Uh, um, I know you must be proud, like we were talking about earlier, just to be a part of this and uh, and to keep it going. So, uh, you know, after seven years, you, you've got to you got to be used to uh, being a part of this crew. But, you know, that, that's got to make you smile from here on out. Uh to be a part of this. I know you're proud. I, I appreciate that. It really is a unique opportunity and, and one I don't take for granted to play this music, uh, you know, all over the country and have a chance to tour. So it's, it's really been a great experience. Now, how can everybody find out about the album and, and get it and see about the, the uh, concert dates coming up? How can they find out yeah. about that? Yeah, the best place to start is just check out our website. It's glennmillerorchestra.com. You can even Google that, Glenn Miller Orchestra. And that's got some information about the band. It's got our tour schedule. And there's an online store there with uh, all, all the albums we have, as a matter of fact. So check that one awesome. out. Easy place to find everything. And the name, what's the official name of the title of the uh, of the album? That's, that's coming up. I got, it's a mouthful. It's, uh, I think it's Glenn Miller Army Air Force Band 80th Anniversary. So you'll Very, see. It. Yes, indeed. Well, there you go. Be looking for that, everybody. Thank you so much, Eric, for uh, talking with me today. I I'm excited for you too. It's really good music, and I'm I'm glad uh, that you chatted with me today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking a moment here to chat. Yeah, thank you so much. All righty, well, you have a good day. Yeah. Bye bye. Yes, Eric Stabnow of the Glenn Miller Orchestra. Check out their brand new album coming out tomorrow on April the 5th and check out that new Sentimental Journey single with Crystal Gale. You're going to love it. Check out their website for more information. And until next time, everybody, always remember to keep the music real.